to tie a fly very simple one because I believe that the most simple patterns usually work the best and I'm going to show you a trick that uh, one of my friends who is really amazing tire showed me so at the very beginning I'll add some coq de Leon for the tailing and uh, I love it because it has nice color it has perfect stiffness it's amazing for dry flies but like Spanish Portuguese people I like to use it on my nymphs too but you can use any uh, rooster heckle feather it's okay the reason why I'm using uh, UTC 70 denier is because it's flat so I can build a really nice and smooth taper without any bumps on the, on the body and now you will see why I'm going to use by it and by it is a really really nice material a uh, lot of people there are like two main ways you can tie it uh, with those ribs showing off or with the uh, just color uh, segmentation I like to use those ribs that are showing off the trick that I've been shown by my friend Benjamin Benjamin is that you cut this almost translucent side of the by it so just cut it and this is very useful trick for small flies because it's pretty white uh, piece of feather so when you want to wrap it around you can't go so so neat I mean you can but then when you reach the end it overlaps in a strange way and it's very very useful to do this so just make it narrow like this Now as you can see the size, the width of the bayat is going bigger and bigger. So instead of going really close to your bayat, now it's gets it, it's folded here, bent. So now, now you have to break it somehow. But you don't need to do that. It's easier if you just do the trick that my friend showed me. So tight at the side of the hook with this cut side facing downwards that's how I do it now go till the bend of the hook and now because the, the thread is flat overlap it slightly create slight taper and <clears throat> go towards the tungsten I go back cover everything and make that taper really nice and smooth without any bumps you don't need to go completely to into the bead just one or two turns before it that's it now uh, to make a durable fly <coughs> excuse me you need to add something to reinforce it and just, just using a small drop of super glue Now the, the way how I use it, oops, it went somewhere. Uh, the way how I use it is very simple. Okay. I apply just a tiny little drop here at the base and then I pull like a line towards the bead. That's it. I don't need this UV right now. So Take your hackle pliers and take the bayat. Now go slowly, you don't need to rush this step. So go slowly and overlap your bayat. Now you will notice as I go forward, there is a small drop of super glue in front of my bayat. It means that the bayat, I'm using bayat to spread super glue all around this fly and because I made a uh, very nice and smooth body uh, this super glue will apply all over the fly and it will reinforce it really nicely so now go into the bead with this go a little bit left and then just insert it into the bead oops Never mind. 
mind. It doesn't go anywhere. Okay, push. Now go one turn over the buy it. That's more than enough. And one in front. Cut the buy it. And now it's time to whip finish the fly. No, it's not the end. Use orange thread. And the reason why I didn't use too many wraps around the uh, bayat is that is because I'm going to use orange thread now and I'm going to add some more wraps. So no need to or over wrap your fly with many many turns. Now just use a few small bits of dubbing, press it against the thread two times, spin, and that's it. Now I'm going to use one more bit and that's it. Now try to try to wrap it like almost at the, in the same spot like this and now create hotspot here so like this one and I like to make two because I'm not varnishing this part this is it finished fly very simple very durable I mean, it's not as durable as, uh, for example, hair's ear or something like that, but it's pretty durable. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, one big thanks to my friend who taught me how to tie this way. And thank you very much.